Hi everyone, my name is Maureen uh, Bandari. I'm the founder and CEO of Bandari Beauty. So I'll just give a brief description of um, my business and where I started so that I can leave enough time for Q&A. Because I was telling her, sometimes I can come and tell my story, yes, but maybe what brought you here, you want to understand how is branding done? How is marketing done? How is finance? Then when do you need an accountant? When do you need a tax person? Actually, where I'm, I, I am right now, I've become even a tax expert. Because <laughs> this year, eh, me and Kayare, we have been like this. So there are some things that I've learned along the way, which I feel you guys can, um, you know, uh, get to learn from me. I've been in business for six years. So we started in 2018. So just like most Kenyans, I was employed and then I was doing my business as a side hustle. So, you know those scenarios where you do a side hustle to a point where your salary is matching how much you're making, and then now you have to call yourself to a meeting and start analyzing, okay, so if I'm doing nine to five, and then I'm just concentrating on my business later in the evening, but we are matching in income, then ideally where should I move? So I quit my job in 2019, and at that time I was actually doing both makeup and skincare. Then in 2020, just before lockdown, I literally came back to Nairobi. I was doing the business in Mombasa online. So I came back to Nairobi, and you can imagine, I just landed in Nairobi like today, tomorrow it's lockdown. You can't move, you can't go anywhere. So I haven't even familiarized myself with my surroundings. So 2020 was quite tough, I would say. Um, as COVID died down, I then made the decision, okay, maybe, it's time for me to have a physical store where now the customers can come to the store, we get to see each other, you know, and um, do the treatments. So in 2021, that's when we opened our first <laughs> store in Greenhouse. And I can tell you it was so daunting because at that point, I remember I had done a Synthonomy class, which was teaching us, even if you do an online business, you have to quantify your expenses. So we finished, uh, you know, making our store, but we were so afraid because we're just like, eh, if customers now come in, what will we tell them? And then, you know, yes, we were qualified, yes, we had trained and all of that, but there's some security that used to come with consulting online. Because if I don't know what is bothering your skin, I can easily call my dermatologist, I can send a photo here and there, you know, and, you know, ask around what should be done. But now, if I'm with a customer face to face, and then they have come with an issue that I do not understand, how then do I look professional in that setting without them feeling like I don't know what I'm doing? Let me tell you, the moment you see a young lady getting out of this, the lift and they're just walking towards your store, you're just like, yo, Jesus, may I remember <laughs> everything I have trained all these years. Until a friend of ours came to visit to see how we were doing and she was surprised, like, why are you guys still enclosed and looking like you haven't opened? So she ripped all the manila papers and we were just feeling exposed, we didn't know how to act. <laughs> but in that scenario, I realized the importance of being trained, the importance of being skilled at what you do. Because the moment people started coming in, we realized, oh, actually we know this thing. It's just the fear of transition from online to physical. What we position ourselves in the market is the home of personalized skincare solution. But we also want to be known. Like, if you want to think about skincare, we want to be the people that come to your mind. Yeah? So, we have really tirelessly done that over the years. So, now we are in our sixth year. But since we had a physical store, I can say that was from 2021 to now. And in that particular moment, everything I do, I do it from a point of I'm not competing with anyone. Yeah? I want to compete with me, but from me last year. So at the end of the day, I need to look at my business this year and see what have I improved? Where do I want to go? You know, what unique element can I bring to the table? And I made a decision and said, and I, to I, I always tell my marketing team, I genuinely don't want to know what everyone else is doing. That looks like your job. 
you figure out what everyone else is doing and how can we be different. Just give me ideas on how we can be different. Let me focus on being a visionary leader. So with time, I started um, joining different accelerator programs. What I learned in those accelerator programs was sometimes you don't have to be the one, you know, doing the mistakes and learning on your own and doing all of that. You can always learn from other people. And that's why whenever I'm called to such, you know, situations or such meetings, I always come because it then means that you really care about your business and you really care about growth and learning from other people in a way that you don't have to be the one making the mistakes, you don't have to be the one having sleepless nights trying to figure out what do I need to do. You can actually learn from what other people have done. So basically right now where we are, we, I would say we are one of the top skincare brands in the country, shamelessly and without being humble. <laughs> but I can tell you for free, being the first to do anything can accelerate your businesses in ways you cannot imagine. And we were the first ones to introduce the skin analysis machine in 2021. And right now I can tell you for free, almost every skincare business has it, but we have never lacked clients. In fact, at any given point, we are usually three months booked. Like right now, as I'm speaking right now, we are booked up to the end of August. And that's because we were the first ones to adapt. So what ideally you tell your customers is, in the, in, when they look at you know, everyone who has this particular you know, product, they sometimes unknowingly or knowingly trust whoever started it first because they imagine they might be knowing what they are doing. Because you can come into a certain industry and do exactly what everyone is doing. Or you can go into that particular market and decide, you know what, hey, me, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna create my own path. Whether my competitors do this or not does not bother me, but I know what I want to do for my business and that's what I'm gonna do for my business. So my key message is always be different. At the end of the day, you can make your business what you want to make it. You can be one of those people who is just like, I have a business and you know, I don't know that you guys have seen these videos online where they say, yes, you can have a business for even a few years, yes, but are you still a sole proprietor or are you an entrepreneur? Yeah, are you that person who, without you, it's like even the business is on leave. If you go on leave, <laughs> the business has to be on leave. For me, my team knows, if I'm away and I'm on leave, please, even if there's fire, we have insurance, call the bank, call the insurance people. It is not me <laughs> that you will call, because even if you call me, you're just stressing me in wherever I am, and then I cannot even come and put the fire out, or I cannot come and see it's flooding and remove the water. You're calling the wrong person, yeah? So start putting structures way early in your business, so that by the time now, you are in a situation where you actually need some time off to cater to your family, you need some time off to cater to yourself as well. And that's one of the things that I came to learn a lot this year, that the owner of the business, being free and idle, is the best thing that you can do to yourself. Because those good ideas will never come when you're under pressure, you're in the business, and then someone is like, oh, sign for me here, then someone else is calling you, what do we do about you will never get an idea at that particular situation. But when you're free, or you're just you know, having lunch with your friends, you're having lunch with your family, you're just scrolling on TikTok, that is when even some of these ideas come because your mind has been freed up in a way that it can be able to think. Uh, good evening. First of all, well done. That was a really, really nice story, well told. Then um, I'm just wondering, given that you, you seem to be growing sustainably, meaning you're profitable and you're using that to run your business, I had you say an accelerator. What are you expecting that to solve for you? For me, what I really want to learn, even from these accelerator programs, is how to interpret my financial reports in a way that I can also make decisions. Yeah, because I do make decisions, yes, but sometimes I have to do a lot of, you know, consulting. Okay, my numbers are looking like this. W what do you think and whatnot? But I want to be in a scenario where I'm able to understand, okay, based on the financials that we have, we cannot even hire people for the next three years. Yeah, and then also to 
understand how far can our businesses go. Because sometimes I feel like when you're by yourself doing your business, you can only see this far. But the moment I got a business coach and then they started also training my leadership team, we were, and I can, I can give you one example that happened in our first, um, we had two problems. On the floor, we don't have enough consultants, but we also have a crisis of customer satisfaction on this other end and complaints because they were calling us and we were not picking a call. So from that discovery alone, the consultant was like, there's one person you need to hire who is more important than the other. Who do you think we hired first? Someone for customer service, yeah? So sometimes those accelerator programs help you with things like that. Because if I didn't go to any or I didn't consult anybody or I didn't do anything, immediately it was no brainer for me. I will hire a new salesperson. However, what will happen is you'll continue being busy. Just because you've hired does not mean it will reduce your demand in any way. And before long, maybe three, four months down the line, you still have the same complaints. And then now at that point is when you feel like hiring someone for admin. But what has happened within this particular month is probably you have even chased one of your, you know, high paying customer. Because they feel like, why am I bringing my 50,000 to this business which doesn't even pick their calls? Being it that you're in the skincare industry, as you've said, and you're in it in such a way that it's your own product, you're not selling somebody else's product, how did you combat something I feel like is a part of our country's culture where they're really not, what's the word, they wouldn't go to purchase products that are manufactured from home as opposed to something that has been manufactured outside because already people from outside countries are marketing their products, they have already been in the game for longer, so you would understand why somebody would opt for those products. So how did you combat that kind of risk? Or yeah, For me what I would advise is storytelling because that is exactly what I did. Storytelling from a point of showing people this is how I went about finding you know, uh, a, a biochemist, for example, or a formulator. These are their qualifications. Sometimes it hurts for sure, and I can tell you at what point it hurt my feelings, but I knew in business you cannot have emotional feelings, by the way. So I had to do a lot of storytelling, yeah? Telling people, this is when I started having this particular idea. This is how I picked people to help me formulate. These were their qualifications. This is what we were doing with this particular lab. And one of the things that I really made sure that I do was to have my products kept certified. I had to show people how I certified my, my, my products. Because the way you certify something that is coming from outside Kenya and the way you certify something manufactured here is totally different. So if you are in Kenya, you just give uh, Kebs an email or a call and then they come on a random day to your manufacturing plant. They pick randomly the products and then they go and assess them against you know, non-allergens and mercury and all of that. So if you're able to tell people this is actually the process, I'm more likely to believe you than if you did not tell me anything, now I'm left to my imagination. And sometimes there are people who will never be convinced. That's also a reality. And I feel like you can try to convey the message, you can try to convince, but we also have to accept that it's not everybody who will always be a customer, and you have to be okay with that. So she's asking, I'm in a very highly competitive environment, what are some of the three things that I don't compromise on? Number one, without a doubt, will be quality. Quality of the products that we stock. And then the thing that we also, put a lot of effort in is respect for others. Me, by the I'm never afraid of telling a customer, you are wrong. Hey, let me tell you, first of all, a customer is never right. Sorry, whoever came up with that thing. And I always notice this from a point of, a customer will come, you know, they can even quarrel with one of our consultants. Then they'll come to my email or my DMs, and then they're like, oh, I came to that shop of yours. You know, those are your people, so you what, 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 what. 
I'm not one of those bosses who will come and start telling my staff, why did you do one, two, three to this customer? I'll actually tell the customer, okay, I've had you, let me figure out and find out what happened. And when I go to my people, it is more of, okay, who served this customer? Please explain what happened. And then I will hear what my people say and then compare with what the customer is saying and then make a judgment. And I call out my customers all the time. In fact, I've been in a scenario where a customer disrespected my rider. So you can imagine, the customer tells us, deliver in Kilimani. And then she went to this place where there are lions. It's called what? No, Rongai. <laughs> <laughs> so the rider, gets to Kilimani, he, call, he calls her, she's like, oh, actually, I even left there, I'm in Rongai, bring it here. But if you have a business, you know, now the delivery fee has changed. So the rider gets there and tells the customer, okay, now since you changed, you just need to add me 150 bob. The customer started abusing my rider, like, oh, you don't know what you have to what, I'll even tell Maureen to fire you, or... She was extremely abusive. And I told my, my, my delivery person, have you handed her over her parcel? And he said, no. And I said, go back with it. I'm refunding this customer. And I remember that was even the era of Fenty this, Fenty that. It wasn't very popular. Now everyone wants, like, I just post, we have restocked and they finish. Yeah? Now this person has even bought, I think she was going like to a birthday party now that was the gift she begged and begged and i told her you have to the same way we respect you you have to respect my people and i have done it many times even to a point where my driver tells me this the customer says this hey i put them on a conference call <laughs> so respect for people is something that i talk about both to my customers and to my team. So that my team can know if you were the disrespectful one, then you have to be held accountable. And you as the customer, it is not a must we transact. So respect my people and my people will also. And I've seen you doing like, imagine it's not all money that is good money. Some money will give you headaches headaches for weeks in a way that you cannot even innovate anything. It is not worth it. So for me, I always, you know, ensure that people respect our business so that when you are holding us accountable about respecting you, we can say, okay, this is a balanced uh, equilibrium.